Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a Unit 3 FRQ for AP Human Geography. We're going to be talking about the diffusion of pizza. So pizza started in Naples, Italy. That's its hearth. That's where it originated from. And it's diffused across the world, particularly in the United States. It's so popular here in the United States. There's so many different pizza types, like we can see here in this first image here. And then the second graph that we have here, this isn't the full graph, but it shows a good part of it. It shows that cheese supplies have been increasing, while consumption has also been increasing, just not increasing as fast. And what that's done is decrease the price of cheese, because there's a lot more to go around. Now that part of it, the economic part's not that that important. What we're looking here, though, is that cheese consumption and production has been increasing overall. And we're going to use that to answer the first question here, where we have to describe the relationship between cheese consumption rates, which is shown here on these graphs that show that they're increasing, and pizza consumption rates in the United States. So pizza consumption rates is not shown here on the graph. So we're going to have to use our brain to make some inferences here. So if cheese consumption is increasing, if they're producing more cheese, what does that mean about pizza consumption rates? Well, that probably means that there's an increase in pizza consumption rates. So if you said that, that's good. Another way you could have said this, a more technical way, it's probably the, the best way to say it, is that cheese consumption rates are correlated with pizza consumption rates. So there's a positive trend. So cheese consumption rates increasing is correlated with pizza consumption rates increasing. It's a growing positive trend as well. Now, if you said pizza consumption causes cheese consumption rates to increase or cheese consumption rates increasing causes pizza consumption rates to increase that is wrong if you use the word causes that's probably not right correlated is the best answer here now why because correlation when there's a relationship if something increases while another increases that does not mean that one causes the other here so we can't technically conclude that now in our heads we might say okay if people are eating pizza of course they're eating more but we can't technically conclude that as the only reason because there's other factors as well. So to get a point on an FRQ like this or just in another class, you don't want to sound stupid, correlated is the best word to use here. B, identify the type of diffusion that pizza has undergone as it spread from Naples to America. And we can see here we have Italian pizza here on the left. I've had Italian pizza in Italy. It is so good. It's way better than American pizza. And we have a Chicago deep dish pizza, which is also really, really good. Now, it's not the same, as you can see here, but it has diffused and it has grown in popularity. So we're going to rule out relocation diffusion for that reason. Now, what type of diffusion causes the idea, the object, to change and adapt as it goes to new places? That's stimulus diffusion. Stimulus diffusion is a form of expansion diffusion where an object or an idea or a concept spreads outward and grows, but it changes and adapts to the places that it diffuses to. C. Explain one historical cause and one contemporary cause for European culture diffusion to the United States. So the College Board may do this. They do it a little bit infrequently, but they may ask you to give, give one cause and one effect, or give one historical cause and one contemporary cause, or give one push factor and one pull factor, because they want to see if you can do both sides to the question here. So they might do that, and they might make these, question, these points two points, as opposed to the normal one. Like this one, that's one point. This one, however, is two points points. So, European colonization of the Americas has led to the establishment of European languages, religions, and culture practices like cuisine, like pizza, in the United States. So, the question is not particularly asking about pizza in specifics, but you could have used that as like an example and related it to colonization. Something that is really easy with these historical causes of diffusion is to deal with colonization or deal with trading. Those are typically the two best ways to describe culture diffusion when talking about historical diffusion. The Enlightenment period in Europe influenced American political thought, particularly the ideas of democracy, individual rights, and government structures. If you remember learning about the Enlightenment period, if you took AP World History or just a World History class or U.S. History class in middle school, you may have learned about that. And it's asking just about culture diffusion, and uh, po politics is a big part of culture as well. So this could be an answer you could have provided. This is one that I think maybe a lot of people would have put because we're talking about food, we're talking about pizza, and that could lead people to think about, oh, the Columbian Exchange, a trade route. That introduced European crops like wheat, sugar, and livestock to the Americas, shaping food practices and preferences on both continents. Now, we're talking about diffusion to the United States. So it's not necessary for you to say that the Columbian Exchange brought stuff to Europe. But it is necessary to say that Europe brought stuff to the United States. And given examples, particularly on a part like this, can be very, very important and very, very nice for your FRQ. Now let's talk about the contemporary causes. Globalization and advances in technology and communication technology particularly have made European culture products like music, film, fashion more accessible to American audiences because we can share it now in the click of a button on Instagram or the internet, YouTube, that sort of thing. 
European immigration, which is easier than before because of better uh, transportation, like airplanes, has led to the blending of European languages, cuisines, and traditions into American cultures. The spread of the European Union policies and values, such as environmental sustainability and social welfare that have gained prominence within the world, has influenced public policies and social norms and expectations and values within the United States. And the global popularity of a particular European food, including Italian pasta, French pastries, Spanish tapas, has influenced American dining trends and restaurant menus. So just as kind of one dealing about food, because this FRQ is has pizza on the front of it. So you might be thinking about food, and food can be a very easy way to talk about culture and answer both of these questions, the historical and the contemporary cause. So you get one point for having a historical cause and one point for having a contemporary cause. Part D, using the data provided, explain one social effect of pizza's diffusion to America here. So we're talking about those effects of diffusion, particularly how do they affect culture and they affect the society where they're diffusing to. So the diffusion of pizza to America with increased cheese consumption in a variety of pizza types has led to changes in American diets. So you could have just talked about changes in diets. Um, cheese is a good one because we have those graphs. I provide those stimuli for a reason because it might help you answer these future questions. And since it says use the data provided, you might want to use the data to answer your question. And that contributes to higher calorie intake, higher dairy intake, a preference for convenience foods or a growth of Italian food and cuisine. Pizza's popularity in America has become a central part of social events. I go to college, and there's so many events at my college that have pizza. There's parties that have pizza. Families have them for dinner. It's like, all right, let's get a pizza tonight. It's Friday. Yeah. And they have just casual gatherings with pizza because it's an easy food to acquire. It's not as expensive as, you know, a filet mignon. And they can make it a very common food choice for group occasions or just individual consumption. The widespread availability of different types of pizza has influenced American food culture, and it's a, a blend of Italian culinary traditions and Italian food culture with local tastes and local interests, and that can create new regional pizza styles like the Chicago deep dish pizza or New York style pizza or Southern style pizza or Hawaiian pizza with pineapple, which was not made in Hawaii. E, compare how the diffusion of different cuisines such as pizza, and when I'm saying cuisine, I'm not talking about like a gourmet food. I'm talking about food, just food in general. It's just a fancy word. Has influenced placemaking in America and Italy. So we're kind of switching it up a little bit, and now we're talking about how does this influence placemaking? How does this impact the cultural landscapes within the United States and Italy? We're doing comparisons here. So the diffusion of cuisines like pizza has contributed to the creation of distinct neighborhoods and dining cultures with areas like Little Italy and cities like New York and Chicago that become hubs for Italian food and culture. So we see different enclaves and hubs for Italian food, Italian culture, Italian residents, New Jersey. And we also see chain restaurants that have American style food in combination with Italian food and Italian settings and culture like Olive Garden. In Italy, pizza's diffusion is more about regional variations and the preservation of culinary traditions and history within the country. And we have cities like Naples that become the birthplace of authentic pizza styles or cities with other foods like Neapolitan pizza, while the spread of Italian food and culture abroad, like the United States, has reinforced Italy's identity as a global food hub. So we can kind of talk about regional differences within both countries. We can talk about uh, Italy serving as a global food hub, while the United States is more of a destination for diffusion with a blend of different um, culinary practices and food preferences, that sort of thing. Pizza has evolved in the United States to suit local tastes with diverse toppings like pineapple, you wouldn't see that in Italy, and different crust styles like cheesy crusts that emerge and reflect a broader trend of cultural adaptation and placemaking where food serves as an expression of multicultural influences. Diverse different factors impact pizza. In Italy, the diffusion of pizza within the country emphasizes regional pride, with each area maintaining its own traditional recipes and local variations, their own little pizzazz and art that promote a sense of cultural heritage and territorial identity to specific culinary practices. Now, these responses are very, very in-depth, and I tried to fit them all in one sentence, so that's why they sound very, very specific and very, very in-depth. 
I don't expect you to be this specific on an FRQ. College Board doesn't expect you to be this specific on an FRQ, but it is nice to give as much information as possible. And I would expect you, if you were to give as much information as this, it would take you a few sentences to do so. Now, if you're struggling to answer a question, even come up with an answer, skip that part and come back to it. Do the next part first, because you can do your parts out of order on an FRQ. You can do that as long as you label them like part A, or then you can do part D, then part F, then part B, then part E, and so on. So if you're struggling to answer questions like, like, this is probably that hardest prompt on this FRQ. Come back and do it last because it's not worth wasting your time spending 10 minutes answering one part that you may not get the point for because you don't know how to answer it. Go and answer the prompts that you do know how to answer and answer them well so you're guaranteed to get those points and score the highest that you can get on the AP exam. Part F, explain one way that geographers can observe and record sequent occupancy of culture in the United States. So again, we're not really talking about pizza specifically, but we're talking about cultural landscapes and we're talking about sequent occupancy and how can you observe it? How can you record it and see changes to the cultural landscape in different ways people settle in an area, particularly the United States? How do people change the cultural landscape of the United States? Geographers can observe and record sequent occupancy by studying the architecture styles in different regions, reflecting layers of cultural influence over time. Geographers can analyze place names like toponyms in the United States, where names like San Antonio that have Spanish influence, or New York, which is a Dutch and influence influence, uh, influence, shows the historical layers of cultural occupation as well. We can look at religious sites. We can see if there's a lot of churches. Are they Protestant churches, Catholic churches? Are they um, Mormon churches? Are they Jehovah's Witness facilities? Are there temples? Are there synagogues? Are there mosques? And that can observe how different religious groups have left their mark on landscape, on the landscape or different areas of the landscape over time. And that can show different shifts in cultural dominance and change. The distribution, the distribution of languages across regions like Spanish in the Southwest or French in Louisiana, English in the Northeast can also indicate historical layers of different culture groups lay, settling and occupying the land over time and making changes and footprints onto the cultural landscape and just the culture and settlements in the area today. So we can look at architecture, we can look at toponyms, we can look at religious sites, we can look at languages that are being spoken, we can look at a lot, we can even look at the political structure, politics, or political priorities as well. Um, we can look at a bunch of different stuff to record and observe sequent occupancy. So this is not an exhaustive list here. This is what I would think the most common responses would be to a prompt like this on the AP exam. What are our takeaways from this FRQ? So there are seven total points on this FRQ. Part C was worth two points. The rest of them were worth one point. You got one point on part C for the contemporary cause and one point for the historical cause. FRQs in your AP exam are 50% of your exam score. So they're important. And if you want to do well in the AP exam, you got to get some points on each of your FRQs. Stimulus diffusion is a form of expansion diffusion where the idea, concept, or object changes. It can adapt as it spreads and grows in popularity and reaches new places and new cultures. So we saw that with pizza here. Pizza in Italy is different than pizza in the United States. I'm sure it's different than pizza in other countries as well. And that shows stimulus diffusion. McDonald's in the United States is different than McDonald's in India because they have more vegetarian options in India because they don't eat beef because of the culture. Correlation doesn't mean causation. Just because there's a positive relationship where two things increase simultaneously doesn't mean that one causes the other to increase. If an FRQ asks you for a historical cause of diffusion, think colonialism. The, best, the next best one is trading. If an FRQ asks for contemporary causes of diffusion, think globalization. Think about how the world is more connected now because of uh, economic hubs and communication technologies and transportation technologies. You can kind of think about time-space compression as well and the contributions made to that phenomenon. Placemaking. If we want a definition of placemaking, that's the process of creating meaningful spaces that reflect and celebrate the cultural identity, values, traditions of a community through design activities and shared experiences and common history. Sequent occupancy means different groups of people living in the same place over time that each leave their own marks and footprints to the cultural landscape that shape the area's current culture and landscape and environment. So an example here would be New York City in the United States. Dutch settlers originally settled there and they built the first structures. British colonists settled later and added their own kind of architecture here. And now there's modern skyscrapers that now dominate the city. And it shows different layers of influence. So if you go to New York City, you might find buildings that have different layers as the floors go up, different types of architecture as the 
scores increase and they developed over time and of course you're going to see a variety of different architecture just different areas of new york city even if you're just in manhattan because there's so many different neighborhoods that were established and developed over time that shows sequent occupancy within new york city and we can see this in any place that has a cultural landscape throughout the world thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe it really does help me out if you have any questions about this frq at all leave a comment down below i'll be glad to answer your question i have more frq videos for this course as well as lecture videos to teach you the content you need to pass the ap exam i'll see you guys in the next video adios